All right, guys, welcome to the podcast. I've got Jake Ingledew of 417 Pest Solutions in Springfield, Missouri. Hey, welcome to the podcast. Hey, thanks for having me on, man. I yeah, man. It. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty cool having you. I, I know you signed up to, to be here and uh, you have told me you were telling me your story. Um, so you, you served in the military? Yep. All right. So t tell me, tell me about that. And thank you for your service. Uh, sure. Yeah. I, I mean, I was in for four years. Uh, I did security forces. So basically like a cop, um, at least stateside. When I was over in Afghanistan, we did outside the wire missions. Uh, basically, we were QRF or some people call it a QRC, which is ba basically a quick response force. And so we just did uh, foot patrols, vehicle patrols uh, through through uh, Afghanistan and the villages and stuff. So it was kind of like a presence patrol. And then we right. respond to any any kind anytime we got mortared or anything like that so dang it. oh just anytime you got mortared that's yeah you know, which was a, pretty, <laughs> it was a pretty it was a pretty frequent occurrence <laughs> yeah i'm like okay that's just normal every day when i'm walking down the street and i get mortared i just hang around <laughs> and, yeah and in afghanistan it's pretty pretty frequent that they they yeah. you know, more, try to wow. mortar the base so god man and, and you made it back and and you're safe so yep. you know th thank god for that bro And so, so tell me about this. How did you, um, cause you, you told me about also you, you, you met your girl <laughs> <laughs> and you got married after three months. Yeah. So it's crazy. So I served a two year church mission. Um, uh -huh. I actually came to, uh, they called it the Oklahoma Tulsa mission. So uh -huh. basically we covered Oklahoma, uh, parts of Arkansas, parts of Missouri and like a little sliver of Kansas. And, uh, The first area I came to was actually near Springfield, Missouri, and that's actually where I met my now wife. Uh, and, you know, we wrote letters and whatnot, but <clears throat> I came back and after two years, I came back. I was at home for like five days and I said, peace out, family. I'm going, <laughs> I'm going back for a girl. And within three months, <laughs> we were married and we've been married uh, this July will be six years and we've got two little kids. Awesome. Yeah, I know. You told me you're snowed in and they're going to be home. Mine was home here yesterday and both of them and... Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I, I we're pretty it's actually, it, yeah, and it's pretty quiet too. So thank God you're, you're good. Yeah. So, and I get it, man. I, I mind walking in the middle. I'm doing a podcast and they walk into the middle of what I'm doing and like, Hey, how are you doing? Hey guys, how are you doing? On the podcast? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, so she's already used to it after six years of me doing this. No, no, no. And, and my son is a little, is still a little shy on the camera thing, but she's not, she loves the camera. So, yeah, so I, I know what you're in for. So hopefully they'll be walking in too. And hey, dad, what are you doing? Um, yeah, I've got the good. door shut. So oh, okay. my, wife, my wife's got them rounded up right now. Nah, so. it's, it's cool. <laughs> so, so, so how, tell me the story of how you got into pest control. because you weren't even, that wasn't even on the radar. Oh, heck no. So um, how I originally got into it is uh, when I came back to my, my wife, I was like, well, I need a job out there to get going. And I had met a guy from my mission that owned a pest control business. Right. And uh, essentially, he offered me a job. I basically was doing door to door sales and running the route and spraying the houses <clears throat> in a new area that they weren't in. Right. And so I did that um, while, you know, my wife and I were taking college classes online and uh, getting ready to get married and getting married and whatnot. And then after about, a, I think about a year of doing that, uh, we decided to go to college. And so we went out to, uh, or on campus. And so we went out to Idaho and uh, in between semesters. So during the summertime, I worked for another company doing door-to-door -door pest control cells. And I did that uh, every summer in Houston, Texas. Right. Uh, and uh, my first year I made, about fifty thousand dollars in one summer and i was like holy cow who you know who knew that there was this kind of money in pest control uh, and i you know there was guys making six figures but uh anyways i uh, i've always been kind of a rebellious soul i pr probably from you know the <laughs> the military the church mission you know all the structure right pretty strict too so i think i was uh wanting to be my own boss and not have anything <laughs> my schedule dictated so i was like i think i'm gonna do this on my own so that's essentially right. what happened well now what would you what did you go to study So originally I went to school to be a dentist. So I was an exercise phys major. I was over halfway through my major. I was job shadowing a bunch of dentists. 
uh, and every dentist I talked to, first of all, they didn't seem like they really liked their job, except for maybe one dentist. And uh, they were in debt. Uh, and I thought it was super boring, because I love to talk to people. And, uh, you know, when you got your finger in their mouth, it's kind of hard for them to talk back. So I was like, I'm not I'm not doing this. Uh, and so I switched to business. And uh, honestly, I never even finished my degree. I've got about 16 credits left. I said, what's the point? I've got a business. Uh, I'm, I'm actually closing on my fourth uh, rental property right now. So I'm investing in real estate and I've got a business. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, I, 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 I've got a, a degree too. And it's like, why did I even waste my time when I, I was already doing business and taking a business degree. And, um, I didn't find that it helped me at all. Um, accounting was probably in finance was probably the best thing. Cause I learned how to do accounting and I've done all my bookkeeping for all my businesses. Um, and I understand it, but other than that, I don't see, and then I was only one semester of accounting. I mean, it's not that hard to do basic accounting and bookkeeping. I mean, if you're going to be doing audits, yeah. Okay. But to do basic bookkeeping, it's not that hard guys. Um, so I, I didn't find it in, in, in any helpful. So yeah, if you're an entrepreneur at heart and you're a people person and you're a go-getter, um, I don't know. I think the, all the MBAs are going to work for us, uh, eventually, um, that's just the way I see it. Yeah, it's crazy. I, you know, it was college was a good experience. I didn't really take much from it as far as helping me in the business world. Uh, it's funny. I actually remember a college professor. He was over um, entrepreneurship, and right. um, he was teaching us about entrepreneurship. And I like raised my hand and I said, "So, have you ever started a business?" And he's like, "No." I'm like, "So you have no real world experience." just because you have an MBA doesn't mean you know everything. You just have concepts and theories. You don't have any practicality, yeah. but yeah. anyway. Yeah, and most MBAs are managers and they're middle managers. They're not entrepreneurs. <laughs> um, they can work in a structure that is confined and systems and everything is done. And their job is to make sure nothing gets out of line. I mean, mm -hmm. that's what a manager does. That's, yeah. what my, you know, that's literally what they do. Me, I, I'm like, I'm figuring out how to break stuff all day long. Uh, People, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of guys just don't work well with me because like, dude, man, it's working. Why are you messing with it? Because <laughs> yeah, because I want to see if I want to see if I can push this. And um, so I, I usually will need guys around me, at least one that will say, yeah, bro, let's try some stuff, new stuff and blow some stuff up, you know, and see what happens, you know, and. And then the rest will, yeah, it didn't work, bro. So let's do, let's just keep doing what we're doing because <laughs> we screwed that one up royally. So yeah, man. So it's exciting. Um, so you, you started up your business. You're, you're in Springfield, Missouri. How many years are you in now? This is, so this month is starting my third year. Third year. How, mm -hmm. So talk, talk to me about that journey, man. What was, I mean, what was it like for you starting out and cause you already had the sales experience, which is the hardest. Most guys that go into pest control, the reason they can't grow is they don't, they come from a purely technical and they don't have sales ability. And, and if you got the sales ability, you're going to three X, six X this faster than because you, you can then delegate that and hire somebody. Cause you know, you can go out and get the business. Yeah, what's crazy is with my sales skills, <laughs> people are gonna be so disappointed in me. With my sales skills, I didn't, I haven't knocked a single door uh, for my business. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is this is kind of what happened. So I, when we first moved back here, I knew I was gonna start a pest control business, and so why I was getting stuff for it, I didn't wasn't I didn't jump all in. So what I decided to do is uh -huh. I started working a job. Right. And I was doing this on the side. And then when it got too busy that I couldn't do both, I quit the job and went full time with the pest control business. And I was doing everything, you know, answering the phones, uh, spraying the houses. And on, honestly, I was so busy. I didn't knock a single door. This is what I did to grow uh, my business. And it's so, it's so simple, but it like, I grew like crazy at the end of each service. First of all, you have to earn the right to, to do this. And I did it every time. So at the end of the, the service, as I'm collecting payment, I, I would say, hey, I'll take five or 10 bucks off whatever I was feeling at the time. Uh, I'll take 10 bucks off if you like and share my business Facebook page on your personal Facebook page. Wow, um, that's a great idea. That one thing alone. So first of all, not only is it getting word of mouth, uh, which is awesome, but it's, it's helping me be more recognizable on Facebook. But then I also said, and I'll take another five to 10 bucks off if you leave me a Google review. 
Right. And they did that every time. And so on Google, I mean, I blew up uh, and, and this might not sound like a lot, but for the area I'm in, it's a lot. I have over 150 five-star reviews, which is That's more huge. than anybody in this, in this area. That's um, huge. Even for us in a major market, because it's so much more difficult to get the review. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's all I did is at the end, after I collect the payment, I would do that, give him a discount. And I haven't had any concerns with that. Only one customer one time he was like, wait, so this is the reason why I went with you guys is because you had good reviews, but, uh, all these people just gave you a review, uh, cause you gave them a discount. And I said, that's the great thing about Google is you can always change that review. And as you can see, no one has changed that review because of how great our service is and how good our, right. our customer service is. And if you is. and if you suck, nobody's going to take the time even for 20 bucks off if you still didn't solve the problem. Mm -hmm. So nobody nobody takes for 20 bucks. It's not a whole lot of an incentive for people to risk their reputation and their friends and and all that. Oh, you went with this company. They know they actually sucked, but they gave me 20 bucks. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's not, it's not going to happen. People care what people think about them. So it's just, you know, for their time more than anything for taking that burden of, you know, taking their time, you know, if they took 20 minutes, it's, you know, that's worth their time. So that, that's brilliant. I, I, I know we're doing that with the reviews and I'm more organic with it. But it's really tough to get them. My guys, I'm offering my guys 25 bucks for every review they bring in. And they, crazy. They, they're they're sending the links. Hey, if I did, you know, a good job for you, you know, please give me a review here. Mention my name so I can get the bonus. And it's one out of 10. So it's a lot of work for them. They're like, yeah. you know, the, the giving out for 10 and they're going to get one. So if we do 100, they're only going to get 10 reviews in a month if they do 100 jobs. Um, it's not, it's not as easy as people think. And especially when here where people are super busy in a big city mm -hmm. and, and if they're on, and it's the other mentioned thing, if, if they don't have a Gmail, man, they got to go into Google yeah. register. It's a pain. It's not, everybody doesn't have a Gmail address. Yep. So it isn't really that easy. If you're getting them, you're doing something extremely right because you're focused on that. That's your, that was your marketing strategy going in where mine was creating YouTube videos. Uh -huh. <laughs> and and that because i'm i'm comfortable in front of this camera doing all this all day long i could do this all day long literally um which is funny so so you haven't knocked on a single door you haven't done it no it's and it's what's crazy is i've trained my text that i've got now right with the system we've got in place anytime we get a new customer they are for sure asking for uh, the Facebook like and share and a Google review. And what's crazy is uh, my technician, my lead tech, he's really good. He's gets, he gets reviews all the time. So um, right now it's the slow season and with the snowstorm we had, we're not, right. you know, getting as many new clients right now, but we'll pick back up probably here, March next month, April. Right. So what, what are you guys doing now? Just out of curious, cause I'm always curious what people are doing in the winter. What are they, what are they, what do you have them doing now um, that you're snowed in and you're getting all this weather? What are the, yeah, what are they so, so the snow, the snow just came uh, like yesterday or the day before um, mm -hmm. there's so right now, you know, we're not, we're not servicing houses, but they're still doing all the regular appointments and we're still getting traffic coming in, um, you know, with Facebook ads, uh, uh, Google local services and um, just the Facebook like and share and, and just naturally people when they Google pest control near me, I'm the first one that pops up. So uh, they're just, they're coming in. Right. And are you doing all that stuff yourself or did you hire a company to do it for you, an SEO company? No, I'm doing it. Well, so I'm the guy that does, my bet, one of my good, really good friends, he designed my website and he's doing my SEO work. Um, but as far as like the marketing for Facebook ads, Google local services, all that stuff, that's all me. Yeah. And, the, and, the, and, 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 and you, you do what type of service do you provide? Uh, our main focus is just general pet, residential general pest. And you're finding that with Google local, even though that cost is high, mm -hmm. it's, 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 it, your, your close ratios are, are good enough that it, it does, you justify that cost. Oh yeah, definitely. And, uh, I mean, we're probably closing at least 50%. Um, and I'd have to pull up the numbers to tell you exactly, yeah. but I think we're closing at least 50%. What's really awesome is my, uh, office person, my office staff, we've already created all these systems. So they've got a whole phone script for everything. So anytime a customer asks a question, like we've got an answer for it, we've got, so it's inbound, you're doing, you're doing inbound sales exclusively. I 
uh, I'm not, but my office person is. Right, so, right. But, yeah, but as a yeah. company, as a company that you're not yeah. knocking on doors, Correct. You're, you're not sending a sales guy out every time you get a call, it's being sold all over the phone. Yes, but we're starting to transition. So I've got one guy lined up for this summer uh, to do door to door sales. And I'm actually going to go out and knock just to kind of scale quicker. So <laughs> him and I are actually going to go knock uh, this summer and, and hopefully put, you know, 400 plus accounts up. And then um, I've trained my technicians to knock doors. So we allow time uh, in between some appointments and they're like we track that KPI that they're supposed to knock a few doors immediately around whoever we serviced. So you're the, I, the clover leafing instead of the leaving the flyer, they're actually clover leafing the area by actually knocking on the, the areas around them immediately. Yep, that, yep. That's correct. And I've been teaching them sales. We do sales training. So we do weekly team meetings and a lot of times we're doing sales training in those uh, just to help them get better at it. Right. But see, that makes a huge difference because even though you're not knocking on doors, you understand sales. Mm -hmm. you understand that scripting you understand that inbound where a lot of guys i would say i would venture to say that 90 plus percent of the people entering becoming from a technician role into a new business role don't understand the business and they don't understand the sales and much less marketing because that's a whole convoluted mess to try to figure out today on social media and I, that's why I decided to focus on my blog when I did it. So you focused on two things. You focused on the, the getting the reviews and getting this, and then you have inbound sales. I focused on YouTube and blog, and I niched it to where everybody wasn't touching, and I got all that clientele. But all that clientele is really high end because we're dealing with plants and mm -hmm. plant healthcare. And that's how I made my money. That's why I was able to say, dang, how can you live when you have so little clients but they're super premium. So yeah. while everybody is selling, while everybody is selling $300 a year contracts, I'm selling $1,200 a year contracts. That's and awesome. I, so then I, I, I didn't need what, for what it takes you to get three. I only need one. So, yeah. So, and then plus it was highly specialized and then I got into GHP. So I think that you, 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 when you bring that to the table, how many people you have on staff right now? Total. So I have two technicians, one uh, admin person, and then I've got this guy that's going to be knocking with me this summer. So got it. There's five yeah. of us total. Right. We're going to go from three now to four because I, I just decided over the weekend I'm going to because of the fiasco I've had with SEO and that I handed that off and it's totally botched now after three months. I decided I'm going to bring because I understand the media game. I understand the video game. I understand that and and i said if we all we have to do to get more is just 10 exit what i'm paying this company to do they're giving me 20 minutes if i'm lucky a month uh of actual attention what can i do with 40 hours of a guy just devoted to cranking out one video per day you know 365 across seven platforms i don't know are you familiar with gary vaynerchuk oh yeah for sure <laughs> okay well all we did is take his model like i just can't have been able to scale it but all I'm doing is taking his model. That's all I did and mm -hmm. said, let me do that. And let me focus. So when we're on now, we're going to be doing Instagram and, and YouTube uh, and, and TikTok. People are like, why are you messing with TikTok? Because it's there. Yeah. And I can use it. So we're going to, I'm just decided for the money I'm paying them, I can pay him a salary plus a commission on increase in sales. And he'll be tickled to death because I understand this game. I'm comfortable here. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be doing Facebook ads at scale, which you haven't done. And everything I do is inbound sales. So everything I sell, I sell while well, people say you can't sell stuff like that over the phone. Dude, we're selling $600 a month contracts over the mm -hmm. phone. But I understand that I negotiated multi-million dollar contracts for a living for five, six years across 23 states. I understand how to do it. You understand how to door knock. You understand how to sell. When you understand it, it's no longer mysterious. And a lot of the guys said, well, how you guys are doing it is how do you get good at sales? It's bloody knuckles and cauliflower ears. <laughs> uh, there, there is no easy button here. You got to go out and knock on those doors and learn to take your hits and learn how to close and learn how to sell because that's the hard part. And then now you're able to train all of your people. You're training your, your which says you can't train text. Uh, people complain all the time. Can't train text to sell. You're training text to sell. You, you're training your, your your inbound people to sell. You know, you're you're selling yourself and now you're creating you're a sales organization. Mm 
Mm -hmm. that happens to do pest control and this is what people don't get oh no i'm a pest control expert no you you, you're 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 an organization that sells and markets products it just happens to be pest control yeah and 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 i think you get it we're trying to you know be really good with the good quality and customer service i mean our number one role and then we we talk about this in all our meetings our every person in my company your number one role is to deliver a phenomenal pest control experience we talk yeah. about that all the time. You nailed it. I nailed it last week. I said, people are not paying for the controlling of the roaches. That's a given. It's the experience. We're the experience society. We're no longer customer service. We're customer experience people. And if you can create that customer experience from the get-go, from that marketing, all the way to the call into the office, to the tech, to to the follow-up after the service, to how, when they complain, how you deal with it. That so whole is- experience matters, man. Yeah, a hundred percent. And this is, that's what we focus on. So the, the number one role for each person in my company is to deliver a phenomenal pest control experience. And, you know, everybody's is a little bit different, right? Technicians, it's they're the face of the company. They're doing the, the quality, the, the spray and whatnot. And then the office person, they're answering the phone calls, but it's a phenomenal pest control experience, no matter what position you are. The second focus that we have that we focus on, and I, we, we call these our daily objectives because we were supposed to do them daily. Uh, and we talk about this all the time, but the second one is sales. And the third one is, is to create efficiencies or, or improve our efficiencies. So it's all about uh, our systems. Like if it can be improved or better, or, or maybe there's something that's lacking, then we got to create it, improve it, add it to the system yeah. so that way a, a monkey can follow and do it you know yeah and, and that's what i've been saying because that's lean people don't understand lean mm-hmm. because they don't understand coding and and but in, and in manufacturing it's better than six sigma but that's lean that's what we're doing constantly figuring out how do we streamline it so that a monkey can do it and people are all in arms going yeah but then you'll replace me i says if you don't make yourself replaceable you can't be with me because i can't promote you then mm-hmm. if you're stuck in that position because you're protecting your butt I can't grow you. You're, you're constantly in defense. You mm-hmm. got to be on offense. And I, I think you're nailing it, dude, where, you know, I don't know where you got your MBA di- information from, but that is spot on. I mean, that's that's exactly what everybody should be focused on. Yeah, I've been pretty blessed. I, I have a, a mentor and I also read a ton of books and I listen to podcasts. I literally have a morning routine where I, when I'm at the gym, I'm not listening to music. I'm listening to podcasts or audiobooks and I try to implement what I've what I've learned. Tommy um, Mello, I'm listening to him this morning while I was at the gym and I was trying to get back to you in time because I had a 10 and then there's a storm and I couldn't leave the gym. And that's that's I'm listening to audiobooks. I'm not listening. I listen to music one day a week. Or sometimes in the evening when I'm super stressed out, I will sit out and listen to music. But other than that, I'm listening to a book or I'm listening to a podcast. Yeah, I'm a big fa- I'm a big fan of that. So I think what's really helped me out is I, I, I've locked down on a couple of things. The first thing that I think is super important for people to do, and it's it's probably the most time consuming. It took me a lot of time and effort to do this, especially since I'm, I'm a visionary. I'm not a detail guy and it, and to sit down in front of a computer and yeah. do stuff is, is hard for me. Um, but I, first of all, I focused on myself. So what are my person, what's my personal vision? What's my core values? You know, what, what, you know, what does my future look like? Because a business is a vehicle to help you accomplish your personal vision. Yeah. You know, some people say pers- uh, business and, and personal life are, are separate. No, they're one in the same they're and, entangled, a, and yeah. the business is a vehicle to help you accomplish whatever you want to achieve. So after I did my I focused on myself, then I focused on the business. Okay. So what's the business's vision, uh, mission statement, core values, uh, you know, uh, organizational chart. I did all that. And then after that, this is the part that took me that that took some thinking and, and time, right? But what really took some time is then I created a, a basically a recruiting process. And so it's all automated. So anytime someone yes. uh, basically this is this is how it works is I have a core value worksheet. So when someone applies, they send in their resume, an automated email gets sent to them with some instructions. First of all, if they don't follow the instructions, guess what? You're not going to get hired because you can't follow instructions. I've been saying that for the last three years, and this is exactly what I do. um, Because again, if you can't follow instructions, how can you follow pest control? Exactly. And and that's what everything is in my business. It's a system. It's it's following instructions. You don't have to have 
experience because guess what? We have it already laid out for you. All you have to do is follow instructions. Right. So there, so I've got this process where they, they got to follow the instructions. The first part is a worksheet. It's a, it's a core value worksheet. So it's a list of 200 uh, values and they have to wow. rank their top 10. And if their top 10 don't in lo- align with my core values, the business's core values, then they're probably not a right fit. So there's that. And then the second part is, is they do a disc assessment. And, you know, I'm looking for a different, a certain, depending on the position, I'm looking for certain attributes. Yeah. And then uh, the, the, the third part is, uh, so I'm reviewing the, the resume pretty much. Yeah. So and I do that, I do that last too, by the way, because it's usually marshmallow fluff. Uh, on yeah. a resume. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then once if you think they're a good candidate, what we do is we just move them into a pool of potential candidates because you should always be recruiting, not always hiring, but always recruiting. So uh, I think the philosophy is, you know, uh, <laughs> let, 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 let me let me let me let me let me let me stop you right there on that thought because you've got a lot to chew on here. I mean, that's a lot. And and here's what I'm here's the pushback I'm going to get from 99 percent of the people that are hearing this. I don't have the time. I don't have the time to do that. And I say, I'm going to bet, I'm willing to bet that you built that as an infrastructure versus an afterthought. Because if you would have waited till you got busy, you would have never had the time. You had to sit down and do this first. Yep. And that's, and that's why I focused it on it with the off season, like we're, right. we're not as busy. Uh, but also I did it early because I know I hear so many businesses that once they get to a certain point, uh, they're not able to scale because they don't have this infrastructure and then they have to go back and create it. And it sounds like a big mess. And that would be, now that would be rough, but it's, it's, it's super simple. Like uh, I know before I had a paradigm shift, it seemed like creating the processes was so difficult. Yeah. It's super simple. All I do is you got to find a way to capture it. Right. And then, uh, and then this is, this is what I do. For example, um, the software, our scheduling software. Right. I, what I do, and I don't even do this anymore. My, my office guy does this because we've got them trained and we're all focused. One of the daily objectives is creating efficiencies. So you're having daily meetings with your guys? Weekly, with your staff. Weekly, weekly. Weekly. Okay. You're having weekly. Got it. Yeah. But, but this is a daily objective for Got it. Um, all my guys and which is to create efficiencies. So this is how I did it when I first started as I would capture the process. Um, so for example, I use Brio stack, uh, I would go in and I would on a zoom meeting, I'd record me doing a process like how to sign up a new customer. Then I would, uh, so I'd record that. I would send it to a virtual assistant. So a guy in the Philippines, four bucks an hour, uh, he would document it and take screenshots of it and upload it into my drive. So now we've got a checklist system of how to do something. So no one should have to come to me and say, Hey, I don't know how to do this. Well, did you refer to the system? If they have if they have referred to the system and then there's a problem that then obviously I need to fix the system but they should always be referring to the system and not coming to me because that frees me up because if I have to keep- systematize everything it's franchise model yeah exactly and so I've got my guys trained to do that so now my admin guy anytime he does something new that he hasn't done before or something comes up new that he he, he hasn't experienced he records it he captures it sends it to the guy to upload it and document it and now we have a system for it and so. In, in our system, we have videos, we have uh, screenshots, snapshots, and checklists. And so it, it's pretty easy that, no joke, I can hire somebody that doesn't have any admin experience and they can just follow the scripts, they can follow those videos. Yeah, we used to do that when I, when I was back in, this was before video, we used to do a book with screenshots. And then I would annotate on the side of the book. And this is how I would train people for customer service and IT is through screenshots, the same screen they were going to see. This is what you do when you see the screen and this is how you enter it. So you, 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 you have done something. You're probably the only guy I've talked to that has actually done what I've been talking about. Where like people, how do you time for the podcast? How do you have time for your kids? How do you have time for the business? How do you have time for this? It's very simple. I systematize everything. Says, yeah, but you can't systematize everything because then, you know, you're, it, you're like a robot. And I said, exactly. And that's how you get it done. And you're, the pushback is always against that. I want to be so creative and I want to be so spontaneous um, that, yeah, you're basically running around with a chicken with your head cut off. You, what's crazy is you can just have a baseline system. Even yeah. for creativity, you can still have a system for that and still have the creative factor in there. But uh, it, it, I love it. 
I think that's what's helped me a lot. Is just is just systematic. Oh, definitely. Th- think about it. You're a three year old company, and you've got how many employees? Four or five? Uh, f- well, three full time, and then uh, so, uh, one summer sales guy. So that's four in three mm-hmm. years. I mean, that's a hell of an accomplishment. Uh, because most guys have been in the business and they can't grow that after 10 years because you develop systems. Here's the pushback you're going to get on your system too, that I'm going to get that everybody gives me is, man, you, you're, you're, you're too idealistic. Your goals are set too high. We can't find people to employ. You're putting all these barriers in the way by requiring all this. Um, I, my opinion is culture first, protect the culture, protect the brand at all costs. You, that's the thing you need to protect. If people aren't protecting the process, you know, the culture, you're going to, you're, you're going to, your company is going to be as weak as your weakest employee who throws a wrench in everything. How, how are you finding these people to work when you have all of this? Well, that's, what's crazy is people, like you said, people say you're robotic if you do a system, right? Right. Well, <laughs> if you have a certain kind of culture, you want a system in place to be, uh, to have that integrity to whatever your culture is. And right. it all comes back to the recruiting process. If you don't have a good recruiting process, you're not going to get the right employees. It, it's funny because I hear uh, business owners say all the time, oh, it's so hard to get good employees. Like, I'm just going to do everything myself. No one will ever do as good enough a job as right. I do, blah, 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 blah. It's like, it's because you don't have a good system in place. That's why you're right. having such a, a hard time. <laughs> it's I've just, got two. I got two million dollar, three million dollar companies that don't have a hiring system in place. They're still winging it by Indeed and saying, "If you worked for this pest control company and you have two years of experience, I'm hiring you. I'm throwing you in a truck the next day with no onboarding, no recruiting, no evaluation, no training to see if this guy even knows anything. Just looking at his resume because I need a hot body right now." And and that's what they're doing. And they're calling me, going, "Look what my tech did. Look what my tech did. dude." Why are you sending me this text? We've been having this conversation for three years. You still haven't developed the system. That, that's and that's and you, and you and you got and you got to, and you got twenty employees, and you got a hot mess on your hand. And you and I told him to do this five years ago, and because he's a genius at marketing, he is. He just can't figure this out. How do you get system? Because he sees that as holding everything back, and now everything's a mess. Yeah, because he can't scale. Because he doesn't have system. And what's crazy is a system that we, I think we overcomplicate it. I know I did at first. I was like, oh man, I have to have all these details and everything for yeah. these systems. No, you just have to have a basic guideline. And then guess what? As you uh, grow and improve or, or things get changed or whatever, you can, you can change those systems. You can improve them, uh, create efficiencies. That's why that's one of our daily objectives. Because of course, it's going to change. The process right. is going to change or, or as you scale, but just have a baseline is, is huge. No, I, I, I totally agree. You know, I think we're, we should, you know, what we should probably do you and I should get together. I'm doing the Pesky Academy. Mm-hmm. And I, I think we should probably you and I get together where you can actually teach this and have your systems in place. Um, because I, I, this is so stupid, simple. It is. I mean, it, it's just hard conceptualizing it at first. And if nobody you know, if you're a technical guy and you can't, you got to, all of a sudden I started my business. I'm not good at sales. I'm not good at marketing. I need to get my business going because my kids are going to starve and they're overwhelmed. And mm-hmm. I get it. But mm-hmm. you come from a different mentality because you've seen something else. A lot of it has to do with your military training. Of, uh, of, I would of, probably say that's that's helped me out a lot because I I've yeah. stole a lot of things that I'm like okay what's one of the biggest organizations in the world it's the military right they have Leadership. processes and checklists and everything I mean it's almost overkill how, how many processes the military yeah. has yeah for a rivet I know I I've seen the protocol of buying a rivet and acquiring a rivet and how it's 200 pages on a rivet <laughs> I'd go to the hardware stores it's the same damn rivet. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, there. but, but I, but you get that and, 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 and the leadership thing and how you lead your people, you can't afford to get anybody killed mm-hmm. and people don't get it that you're bringing that level of, we don't want anybody killed. We want every customer, every employee to succeed. And you're bringing that to the table where you're setting them up to succeed in your organization. Cause if you just hire them without any of this evaluation 
and they fail, then you get a bad review and you're, are you a bad company? Do you have a bad process? Or are they really a bad employee? Because everything rises and falls on leadership. It's really all on you if they fail. You made the choice to hire them and you made the choice to keep them and you didn't train them and you didn't do all this and you're blaming the employee all the time. Um, I, I think that's really unfair. That's why I go through a process exactly like yours where you use DISC and I use Criteria Corp. And Criteria Corp has a thing called Hire Select where it, it's, it involves creating a battery of, of examination. So where I not only do DISC, but I do two actual profiles. And the reason I do two is because they can kind of get a different one, but both of them have to match. So that I'm not getting a false positive. Yeah. And I know that I got a good picture. And then we do the reading and the math. And then we do a mechanical assessment. Mm -hmm. and, and we get a full picture of the person from a soft skills view. And then I can determine by the resume, this isn't adding up. Yeah. This yep. is embellishment over here. Over here, look, they're, they have no attention to detail. They have no this. And here they're putting that they're the greatest thing since the second coming of Christ, you know, <laughs> uh, I mean, and, and, you know, and I'm, and I'm looking at this as it isn't adding up. And then mm -hmm. I see that we have a video interview process where they got to go to the video interview first, which is a, we play 20 questions and I immediately see how they respond to those questions and I can see the body language and everything. And if they don't go through this process, they don't even get an interview with me. So I only get about 1% that qualifies what, aren't you aren't you limiting yourself? I said, yes, I'm limiting myself to the actual best candidate because there's 100 people thinking they're going to make $16 an hour and they think they're going to come in and spray. Uh -huh. and, and they don't have any customer service skills. Working at Walmart and, and, and giving refunds at a counter isn't customer service. The customer says, your product sucks, I want my money back. And you say, okay, that's the policy. There's no special customer service skill. Uh, mm -hmm. if, you, if, you were, if, if you were a waitress... And you're saying, yeah, I'm making 50 grand as a waitress. I'm blown away because now you got some skills that I can use because I can teach you the rest. I just can't teach you how to really take care of people. So, so that's, that's, I think you're, you're, you, that's, if everybody would do this six months before they start their business, their failure rate would just drop, I'd say by 80%. It's just, it's crazy because the recruiting process is so important and people aren't doing it. I, it's just, it's so important. Like I said, I, I just do three things and it weeds out a lot of people because the mm -hmm. thing is with Indeed, people are just going to be applying to everything, right? Because they're going to prefer a job. So why would you just take anybody? I, like I said, I do that core value assessment. I do a disc assessment. And then we actually have uh, questions for them to, to answer um, some specific questions. And then if we decide they move on, we will cross-reference the, their answers and their questions with their disc assessment and yep. their um, resume. And if stuff, like you said, it's not adding up, then then that's what the interview is for, is to be like, well, you said this, tell me a little bit more about this. And you tr try to inquire about some of the stuff. Right. How did you learn about recruiting? Because most people, I talk about this lately, and I'm talking about this. One of the, what, Hiring is one thing. Recruiting is a whole different discipline and an art and a science mm -hmm. by itself, just like, like prospecting is for new clients. I, I got everybody, 90% of the people tell me I'm great at sales. Okay. Tell me about your, your, your prospecting. I said, well, I'm not doing any. And tell me about your, your, how you're getting these guys as well. If they come to me, I can have that one-on-one. -on -one. Well, yeah, that's easy. How do, you get them to come to you? <laughs> How do you get them to come to you? And if you're doing recruiting and you're knocking on doors and you're leaving cars and talking to everybody you meet, then you're going to have more customers. That's the part that sucks. And that's the part they hate. It's that whole door knocking to get that one to six contracts a day. But I got to, I got to eat the 96 to get the sick, the get, you know, 94 to get the six. They don't embrace that suck. How did you learn and how did you get good at recruiting? Because you you mentioned that, and that's difficult. I wouldn't even say I'm good at it, right? Uh, I'm not. I'm not an expert. Luckily for me, first of all, I've learned a lot from reading books. There's a lot of books out there about right. systems and, and podcasts I listen to about uh, systems. But luckily for me, I had a, a I had a really good mentor that helped me 
create this recruiting process right. and, and help me to learn it. The part that was complicated for me about doing it is um, if you have a domain and you're on Go, uh, GoDaddy, is just creating the infrastructure of the automated emails and everything. That part was difficult for me because I'm not a tech guy. Um, but uh, I just had, I, luckily, I had a good mentor that helped me through that process. Good, good. And um, name me a book that you really enjoyed uh, reg <laughs> regarding regarding the recruiting process. Uh, I could list multiple books. Uh, okay. One is called Systemology. Uh, I can't okay. I don't remember the author, and I think I actually that's okay. We we can we can probably find it. Okay, sy sy system. Sy Systemology, super good book. Traction by uh, Gina uh. Wickman, which the guy that wrote Systemology helped Gina Wickman on that book. Uh, so. Probably those two would probably be my 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 top. Yeah, I'm a, I'm actually looking at traction right now when I get to a million dollars, mm -hmm. uh, because that's going to help me tremendously not stumble. Oh, yeah. um, but you got to get to your get to that level mm -hmm. before and you actually yeah. implement it. You missed uh, another one. That's that. That's, that, that's, that's the, the number uh, one, right? Everybody. Says I that. would recommend if you're thinking about getting into business before you actually like if you're a tech right now listening to me. I want to quit this company because it sucks. I would want you to read that book before you make any decisions about what you're actually going to get. Cause that's one of the ones that kicks you in the groin and makes you look at it from a real perspective, what you're actually going to get into when nobody will tell you, everybody's selling you the hype. People say, well, E-Myth is outdated. E-Myth is never outdated because it's a reality check. Yep. You know, and then the other one is actually reality check by Guy Kawasaki. Uh, that's a great book about getting into business, but he does it at more higher level. I think Emit takes it down to the average guy who's a technician wanting to be a business person or entrepreneur and having that gut check. Um, I think that's brilliant uh, of a book for that. Yeah, yeah no, I, I just, I, Jeb Blunt on, on actual, I just finished listening to his book not too long ago on, cause he does a lot of door to door sales stuff and he just did one on prospecting and he had one on military prospecting actually. Um, recruiting for military and he did a case study with the military on how they actually did recruiting and then he started implementing that to business which i think was brilliant so i think if you haven't read that one i think you would probably enjoy that one yeah i haven't read that one i'll have to check that one out yeah yeah uh, but yeah these books uh emeth I, I think i would agree with you i'd start with that one and uh, and i actually correct myself the guy that wrote systemology helped with i think the emeth I can't okay. remember if it was that one or, or, or attraction, but right. either way, he's a systems guy and he has right. a podcast that I listen to all the time that has a ton of great information. Um, one thing that I feel like I, I should tell you guys that I think uh, for your listeners might be super beneficial because it's been beneficial to me right. is uh, one process I created and I actually got it from a book is I'm, I'm not an accountant. I'm not a finance guy. I am not good with financial statements and understanding them. Right. So what I did to help me just visually look at how I'm doing in the company is, is super simple. So I have, I set up um, a few different business banking accounts. So I've got my one main account, which I, I call it the 417 revenue account. All my transactions, everything goes into this account. Then I have another account that's for profit. So I pay myself first. I take 10% of whatever goes in there and right. I put it in a profit and right. I take 20% of the the main account and it goes into owner's compensation so i'm always paying myself first yeah so you, then, you're that's the book profit first yeah the yeah. profit first and that yeah. and that has been huge for me yeah uh, it's easy it's kind of like your mom used to do it with here's 20 bucks for law you know for food this week you know here's so much for this and she would put it all in little envelopes and separate the cash this was before you know you had you know credit cards and all this and that was this, that's the system. It was very easy. If you take 10% for this, 20% for this, for majors, then you're never going to be short because you're never going to overspend. Uh, and it's a whole concept of what my college professors used to tell me. He says, Frank, pay yourself first. Mm -hmm. put, your, put your savings aside first. Yep. Put your investment aside first, then spend the rest. Yep. And that's something that we just don't learn. And it's very hard to do when I get it. When you're, I mean, inflation has just been terrible for a lot of people. Uh, I mean, here we've had, double triple digit inflations in Miami. I mean, houses, you don't make, you don't make 85 to a hundred thousand dollars a year. You're not owning a home in Miami ever. Yeah. It's, it's cr that's crazy. And the, the nice thing about this too, is if you're like me and you're not a numbers guy, <laughs> uh, I say that, but I love numbers, especially when it has to deal with money, but I, I'm not, you know, an expert at reading financial statements or whatever. 
this becomes a dashboard to where I can look at it and see how I'm doing. Uh, so I guess to, to kind of finish, just so your listeners know, 10% goes to profit, 20% owner's compensation, another 10% to taxes, and then 60%, the rest of it goes in operating expenses. I pay all my bills out of that, my guys, everything out of that account. If, if I am not able to cover my bills with that 60%, then I'm doing something wrong. But the nice thing is I go on my mobile banking app, I look at it and I can see the numbers and, uh, it's pretty easy to tell whether we're doing good or not. Just, just, yeah. I mean, if you don't, if you don't, if you can't read a P and L um, <laughs> you know, when I, when I, when I have a, one day I'm going to have my CFO, it's very simple guys. How much do we have in cash flow? How much do we owe? How much is owed to us? Mm-hmm. That's pretty much the numbers. A P and L a, a balance sheet of how much assets we have. Isn't going to help much in operations. The bottom line is cash. Yep. And, and that's, I think what that's I, why that formula works so well because you get to see the cash flow. Yeah, it's cash flow. I mean, if you don't have cash, you can have zero profit. And as long as you got cash flow, you can be from here to eternity as long as you got cash flow. And and we're and we're not talking about net profit and gross profit. You gotta have a certain amount of gross profit to pay for everything. But if you got so much gross profit, you can still take 100% of that profit out, reinvest it back in the business, make zero money, and you can still pay yourself a decent salary and you can still grow. But if you don't have cash flow, you're going to be dead in the water very quickly. Um, yeah. and, and I think that's what people need to get at. It's cash flow. It's not profit. It, gross profit. And you, people don't even know what they're worth per hour. Like they haven't done any value. How did you determine what you're going to charge based on everything else and and figure out what you're where your pricing needed to be. Was it the competitive pricing that's in the market? Because some markets are highly competitive or was it you, do you have a different price set than the rest of the people in the marketplace? Yeah. So uh, my market is very competitive. Uh, I mean, <laughs> we're, we're, you know, text, the Midwest is a competitive market. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure Florida is too, actually, but the, the way I did my pricing and <laughs> this is probably, I probably shouldn't tell people this cause it's probably not the best way to kind of figure this out <laughs> right but with with me working door to door i i know how uh i worked with two different companies so i know how they price things and then just being door to door i know what other companies were charging because you know you were doing switchovers and and trying to steal their clientele so to speak right um so what i wanted to do is i knew i did not want to be the cheapest because i think that is a horrible business model and right. there's a lot of mom and pop shops around here that are the cheapest right so it isn't want- just it isn't just the national brands and the door-to-door brands that are the cheapest it's actually everybody else because i don't compete my biggest competitors and low pricing here in miami were not the top 10 on the pct 100 it was actually the individual guy who was 65 with a spray can and a 100 year old truck and he was selling service for 25 dollars a month while I'm trying to sell it for $85 every two months. And, you know, that's about my real biggest competitors. Those, those guys in that market, I think that's it. I, I just need enough money to live on. I've got a B and G, a Bifin and a truck. Yeah. That's, that's my strategy. Yeah. And I, I mean, I guess it works, but I just, I like more margins. And so I did not want to be the cheapest. I'm also not the most expensive, but, uh, the thing is, it's all about perceived value. If right. you can be, you can add more value or per, in the customer's mind that they're getting more bang for their buck, right. they're going to go with you. I have right. people call all the time and, you know, they'd say, oh, well, we're just getting quotes. We want to see who's cheaper. And I'd always be like, yeah, you can always find someone that's cheaper, but I promise you, you're not going to get the same quality and customer service experience like you will with us. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's kind of how I determine my pricing. I kind of base it off of some of these bigger companies um, that are on the higher end. Um, I'm not as expensive as some of them. I'd say like, you know, Orkin's, I think Orkin's pretty expensive, uh, but I'm not the cheapest either. So right. that's, okay. that's kind of- and, 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 and if you have the margins and you're paying your people well and your people are happy um, <laughs> and you figured out how to do it more efficiently through systems, Mm-hmm. then you 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 can't afford to charge less and be more competitive. It's just that everybody thinks that because you're charging less, you're offering no quality because I understand the solo operators has to pay for five hats. He has to pay for that sales hat. He has to pay for that marketing hat. He has to pay for the administrative hat. He has to pay for the tech hat and he's by himself. And if one day one of those hats isn't there, 
he's got to charge what he charges like I did mm -hmm. super premium, but I, I gave a ton of value and I gave results that my competition couldn't touch. Um, when the reason I got it is because people say, dang, that yard looks good compared to the other two next to me. And I said, yep. And then they would see the big brand sign on that yard and it looked like tar and he sees mine and it's like, yeah, they charge around here $49. I said, bro, $49 a quarter. I'm at 85 a month. <laughs> That's you know, awesome, so, by the way. So, 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 so you want this or do you want that? Because if you might mm -hmm. as well throw your money in the toilet because you, you got still a, a, a terrible looking lawn. So why are you paying it? Look at the other guy over there across the street. He isn't doing anything. It looks just as good as this one. So that's what I, that's what I said. So if you really want it, you know, you'll pay for it. And if you don't, right. you don't, I can't help you with that. <laughs> you know, I can't lower my quality to meet your, your, this guy's bad service and bad price. Because if you're comparing it against the price, I got somebody just the other day, yesterday, I mean, literally this was, I'm not kidding. Friday, this is a 33,000 square foot lawn. 3,000 square foot of shrub that has to be systemically treated. That alone is four grand a year for the shrubs. The lawn is going to be about 365 a month, not to mention all the palm trees and all the care. This is his second home. His other home that he works out of during the week is in Texas. This is a, a two story, five bedroom house that this estate is probably like two and a half, three million. And he fired his guy because he didn't like the price and the way he was doing it. And he wants me to lower the price. I said, dude, here's what I recommend. You're, you're not a young guy. I need you to take your blood pressure medication and sit down when you read my proposal. I don't want something to happen to you. And then you blame me for it, literally. And I have no trouble looking at a high power guy because he understands it. He gets it. The Bentley costs what the Bentley cost. Mm -hmm. And if you want the Bentley... That's what I sell. The, the, I sell super premium products and service. I'm not, I'm in a blue ocean strategy. If you want a good book, read blue ocean strategy, where if you want to create value, this is where I create value. This is where you have the unique selling proposition. You're doing it because you're differentiating yourself because you're giving an experience that they not getting from the large brands. When they call corporate, that girl doesn't know what Missouri is. She can't find it on the map. And she has mm -hmm. no idea. She's just basically pitching and selling. She doesn't understand that clientele. She can be in California, you know, doing her nails on the phone. You know, that's, you're creating that value. And this is what people need to understand. How do you create value? Because, oh, you're just, that's just fluff. That's just marshmallow. Because what people care about is that you kill their bugs. I would disagree. It's yeah. not, if they, if they did that, they would just go do it themselves. I, I teach my guys, uh, uh, yeah, we, we, we do pest control, but that's not what we're doing. We're delivering, we're delivering a phenomenal pest control experience. So that's yeah. from customer interactions to, to everything, uh, quality of service, all that. I teach my guys, it's crazy. And, and if you haven't read this book, uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People, you should. Classic. It's, yeah. Because the thing is, is, I'm teaching my technicians that when they're there, uh, first of all, not only are they presented nice, right? They're clean cut. They're in a nice uniform. It's yeah. probably the military in me. So they look a little bit tactical, uh, the way the, the uniform is our Excellent. trucks look phenomenal. Some, I see some people's trucks and I'm yeah. like, are you going to go with the guy that, you know, looks rough and gruff and has his beat up truck? Or are you going to go with the guy that looks like a professional Right. every time you're going to go with the professional. So all of that is in there, but also, uh, going back to the win friends and influence people. When you're in somebody's home, and I teach my technicians this, there is something in their home. Uh, you can, and you can start with, you know, hey, are you originally from around here? That's a good conversation piece, right? Right. But you can also find something in the home that if you can gen uh, genuinely connect with them on and do it. So, for example, one of my technicians, he's really into hunting and fishing. He goes into a home and he sees, you know, uh, 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 right. some antlers up on the wall. He's like, hey, did you did you shoot that buck? You know, and then next thing you know, he's just asking them questions about themselves because people like to talk about themselves. Of course. And next thing you know, that person likes you more 
and already you're, you're getting that phenomenal pest control experience there. They, yeah. they, but there's a genuine, con- there's service. a genuine, there's a genuine connection there because he's genuinely interested in that. Yeah. He's not, he's not just bringing it up to have a conversation is, you know, that's a great 45 inch screen TV. You know, I wish I had one next. Yeah. You know, I yeah, mean, he's, exactly. he's, he, there's a genuine enthusiasm for what he does. It's like me, my genuine enthusiasm is that, you see me on this podcast like this. This is how I'm pitching when I'm on your lawn. Mm-hmm. I'm fanatical about how the way your lawn should look. And and people are like, dude, how long have you been doing this? And I said, 14 years. And you're still this excited about it? Uh, <laughs> it, it, it is a consuming passion for me. So, so it, when you're genuine and when people see that and you hire the right, when you hire that right mix of person with the right skill set to connect with people. Because this is a people business. It has nothing mm-hmm. to do with pesticide. It has nothing to do with pests. It's a people business. And what people forget, technicians forget, because they tend to be crabby and introverted, mm-hmm. that it's all about the technical skill. And, and I got guys that I know that couldn't kill a roach if they stepped on it, and people love them. Yep, yep. And if I could teach him how to control pests, yeah, if I could teach him how to control pests, he would be so awesome, but he's not going to because he's, he should probably be in sales and not be a Uh tech. But that's the thing is that's a skill that's teachable, right? The pest control part is teachable. It's a process. You just, you you know, have checklists and, uh, and it's not that hard. No, no, it's not. And, and, you know, I'm not a technician, uh, right. I mean, I was right. I was spraying, but right. my skill wasn't the knowledge of all the pesticides they use, the, what products to use, how to get rid of them. I had to learn that as I, I went along. Cause that right. wasn't my skill set, but I delivered on the experience, the, the customer interaction. And right. that is huge. That's probably yeah. the biggest selling point for us. Well, and, and you combine that with discipline, um, that you have and, and, and that professionalism and that military look where people respect that they can see mm-hmm. hey, people can sniff when a guy going into a home is secure and insecure. Even if he doesn't know if he's secure, people will smell that. Yep. And my technicians, I got one that he's young and he's, and he's inexperienced still and I'm coaching him, but he's, he's a great kid. He's just, he's just one of those good kids. Mm hmm. And he's genuine and, and he's likable and he's, you know, he's a good kid and a kid, you know, cause he's 25, 24, um, I'm 50. So everybody, you know, is a kid to me at that, at that point. Um, but you know, he, and, and I can, and, and then he'll make the mistakes and forget things, but he'll follow protocol. And then when I change it on him, it flips him out. So I don't change things. I have those protocols written. I said, you know, the only reason you failed here is because you forgot this. If you follow the, you missed this step, follow the mm-hmm. steps. If you miss it, it's kind of like when you're baking a cake, you, you got to get all the dry ingredients on this side. You get all the wet ingredients and you understand how sugar and fat work together. If you don't mix it right, the cake doesn't come out right. But if you follow this every time, no baker would ever say, oh, no, I'm going to experiment with that recipe. And I'm going to throw in all the wet ingredients together with the dry and it's going to come out fine. Nobody would say that. We keep saying stuff like that because we want to be so creative i guess and and it, we don't want to be in that corporate because they hate corporate a lot of guys have this issue when i talk to them is because they actually hate corporate corporate mm-hmm. you know put the screws to them and they bring that and they need to really they need to get over that hold on a second i got walgreens is calling me hold on let me turn this off i should have turned this off so it didn't bother me uh seven exams on the go excellent all right so Walgreens. Whoop. Let me make sure I didn't accidentally. Ah. Technical difficulty. Okay, we're back. We're back, folks. Um, yeah, man. So I, I, I think that it, 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 if you learn to use your strengths, in this case, you've admitted you don't have financial strengths and you don't have this, so you had to create a system for that. But you know where your strengths are. They're, they're in leadership and systems. And creating because you that's your experience that's what you know and i think if you're you you're comfortable in that skin and you develop a business around that and and ultimately all business are going to take the shape of the leader unless you're you know three four five hundred person company you know that takes a different role but my culture and my company is me if i'm running off the handle if i'm disorganized if i'm screaming at everybody if i'm being a jerk 
my kids are going to reflect that because kids are a reflection of what they see every day in their parents. So if you bring that stability, if you bring that comfort, if you bring that calmness, um, it's, I've been frazzled for the last couple of days and I'm even my technician was sitting here in my house and I was talking to the SEO company and he just looks at me and he says, he's never seen me irate. Never has he seen me pissed. And all the, he's known me for 10 years since he was a kid. 14. He's never seen me pissed and angry and use a cuss word. And I was like a stern. It wasn't like I was screaming and shouting. This was one of those stern conversations. You know, we need to fix this, this way, this, 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 and this. I'm no longer going to be patient with you. And he's never seen me talk to him that way or anybody. Um, mm -hmm. And he was like, like when dad, you know, remember the movie uh, Christmas Story? When the guy cusses <laughs> yeah. and they... You know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. They don't, st that's, that's not who I am as a person. So when you see me, you know, going off, it's, it's, it's bad. Yeah, and I think that, that that's the culture. And then too many guys are just by their emotions all the time. And you need to bring that stability in. You need to bring that discipline. You need to have all the things that you discussed, man. I, you know, if I said, if guys would do this, if you're listening to it right now and you're, and you don't do this, you're setting yourself up for failure. You're going to call me about two years later, three, and you're still complaining about the same thing. I think you need to take that time. I was just doing a consulting job of a guy exactly did, didn't do this, another one. And now he has no plan how he's going to hire a technician. He has no reserves. He has no sales experience, no recruiting experience, no training experience, no hiring experience. He's never hired and fired anybody. And now he needs to learn how to do it. And that's going to be painful. Cause he's got to rip mm -hmm. all these, all these bandages off now. <laughs> and you know, I don't, I, I don't have all the answers, right. Cause I'm a, no. I, I'm still learning a ton, but I just think just get some basics down, just have yeah. some basic systems in place yeah, man. and, and then improve them from there. You do, most people already have the process in their mind. So just capture it. That's I mean, yeah, I, I think I, I, they need to just have the clarity. And, I, and a lot of times just having the clarity is sitting down and putting down on paper, everything you have in your brain. Yep. And then even, I, I tell people use free writing where I just start writing all the ideas in my head and I don't edit yep. because I start editing and then I start getting into this perfectionist mentality. Oh, this doesn't sound right. Just let it ride. And then I'll come back to it later. And then I'll organize. That's how I did my missions. We redid my mission statement mm -hmm. and what the vision for our company. It's like a two page document of our values mm -hmm. of what we stand for, of our mission, our vision, and, and, and our brand promise to the client, those four things. And if you don't see that and you don't embrace that, you really can't be part of our organization. It can't mm -hmm. be about, I just want to check because I need a job. The moment somebody says in the interview, have you done any research on, did you see us? No, I said, I just to reply to the ad because I needed a job. That's the day that that's their last question I'm going to ask. I'm going to say, well, thank you very much for talking to me because <laughs> you, did, yeah. you, you didn't do any due diligence. You didn't. And here mm -hmm. you are. You're thinking that you're going to make 16 when you're when you started, when you just came from making nine because you want to make the 16. But you don't have the soft skills. You don't have the soft skills to make the 16, even if I taught you the hard skills. The soft skills are more important than the hard skills. The hard skills, I can teach you how to flip a burger. I can teach you how to do a crack and curse. I can teach you how to fill a station. I can teach you how to inspect. I can't teach you to care. You, you know, going back to, to the pro, uh, the system, like a lot of times people are like, well, I don't want to take the time to type all that up, you know, because that, that, that would be super time consuming. Yeah. You know the process. So record you talking through the process and then send it over to a virtual assistant. That's what I do. I literally go on Upwork. I send it to a guy in the Philippines. He'll document it four bucks an hour. I mean, you can't get a better. You know, I, I've been I've been looking at because I'm bringing over my my media guy and we're going to start. And I said, listen, we need to get into that where we're creating a, a, a team overseas mm -hmm. of of and I and I told him. Like literally last week, I said, you need to really start thinking about being a creative director and not the doer. And we're, we're hiring a guy to do visuals and we're hiring a guy to do, you know, the editing and we're hiring a guy to do all this media because we're focusing on media right now. I focus on sales and Mark, I need him to focus on this. 
and I've been looking at, so you found Upwork works for you good. Like it's kind of like um, Fiverr does for yeah. a lot of things. Cause I've used yep. Fiverr for a lot of things and, it, yep. and it's worked either one, fun. either one. And, and what's really cool that I like, I don't know if Fiverr does this or not. Cause I don't, I haven't used it too much, but Upwork, what's cool is so people are like, well, okay, how do I know these people are doing the work on Upwork? It will document them step-by-step step what they're doing. So if you see them on Facebook and that's not what they're supposed to be doing and you're getting billed for that, you, I mean, you, you can use yeah. the platform and, and it and monitors them. So, uh, I mean, yeah, cause I'm looking to, I'm looking to hire a full-time person right now. I just got to do it in the Philippines <clears throat> just to post our stuff mm. across seven platforms, you know, five, six, seven times a day time and do some video editing and do some graphic work, basic stuff that I need them to do. I don't yeah. need them to do coding. I don't need them. To, I, and I, I don't need them to engage because they're not going to understand the language. There's always that cultural language barrier. Mm -hmm. But on the, I don't, I can't pay a guy fifteen dollars an hour to post and copy paste this onto Facebook. Yep. Which is all I really need is a guy to do that timed across all these platforms. But I need it native because I know that if I use Hootsuite or I use this, I know I, the algorithm dings me because it's not native. It's being pushed through through a software. And the algorithm picks up on that. But when it's native and they're using my login and they're using all this, I, this is what I need to do right now. And I need to build a team. Like I'm thinking of building a team in South America too um, for video editing a lot because we just communicate with the language. Mm -hmm. um, and that's one of the things I'm doing is trying to create, you know, and I got, and, and understand if you got the, this is the way it's done in an agency, guys. This is nothing new. There is nobody doing an agency in Miami telling me, that they're paying all their people $25, $30 an hour and charging you $500 a month for SEO. Uh, because all our people, our people are American based, baloney. You know, the only thing they're American based is when that Zoom link is on. Um, <laughs> you know, that's, that, that, that's, that's, that's gonna, that's the reality. Uh, if you, and this is, if you've never read the four hour work week, which the title sounds ridiculous. Great book. That, that, that's the blueprint right there. If you wanna know how to do this, that's the blueprint. Um, cause I put in about 20 to 30 hours a week on social media to do this. Mm -hmm. Um, this right here is one hour. And then this is about an hour and a half to two hours of editing and posting and getting it up. So we're, we're talking about three hours to do one podcast and I'm doing six a week. Awesome. Yeah, I, I do. I do one per one per week. <laughs> well, what are you doing? Talk to me about that. Talk to me about that. Well, I, so, uh, this is going to sound really bad when I say this, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, I missed being out West. I'm originally from Oregon and okay. being out in Idaho, I was around a lot of high caliber people, uh, right. especially in the sales industry. I mean, you've got right. guys that are just disciplined, motivated, just successful, just killing it. Right. And uh, now that I'm in this very rural town, uh, most people's ambitions is to work nine to five and be a welder for the rest of their lives, you yeah. know? And, yeah. and, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's right. nothing wrong with that. But what I'm saying is I want to be at a different level. And so it's hard because I don't feel like I'm able to connect with people that help elevate me to that next, right. next level. And so I think my podcast is a, kind of a way to connect with people and still get that. Um, but also uh, I started the podcast and, and uh, you know, I'm not good at it <laughs> or anything, but I, I, I started it to yeah. do because I'm a firm believer that by small and simple things, right. uh, you're able to achieve success. And it's always that's something super small and simple that's done consistently that leads to success. And so that's kind of what we highlight in the podcast. What's the name of the podcast? It's called Edify. Ed, excellent. And, uh, and I'm on uh, Spotify and a few different ones, but uh, you know, the sound quality is not good. It's probably the, what you're hearing right now. Uh, you know, it's just- Look, it's just uh, here, here, I've done, <laughs> I've got, I, I got guys who will say, I will never do a video like you did because you didn't use a wind muff. Yet that video has 150,000 views because the content was good. Even, and I had two guys comment and you should have used a wind muff. Well, you should, have, <laughs> you should have recorded the podcast instead of me. Um, mm -hmm. I always like the way I do it wrong, but better than the way you don't do it at all. Um, and, and the, the fact that you're actually implementing this and you actually are doing it and you're not posing like you are, like so many people are, because you've got a business that's three years old and you've got four employees, you actually know what you're talking about. And I think it's more important to be genuine, even if the sound quality isn't great, but you can always edit that sound quality. I, I edit it from a phone and I don't even use a microphone and I do it right in Premiere Pro and it corrects uh -huh. my audio right there. And I can 
in, in five minutes, I correct my audio. Um, and the sound isn't great as through this microphone, but the average person is never going to care because my content, what I'm delivering is genuine. And yeah. it's from experience. It's from my heart because I don't want you to go through what I went through when nobody taught me. Right. And that's why I'm saying that you and I should do something like this because you've got a system that's very simple that anybody can follow. It doesn't have to cost them $300, but if we can sell a thousand of these at 39 bucks, that's 39 grand. I'm more happy with that. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the way I look at things. It's like, well, why are you undercutting everybody? I said, because a lot of people that need it can't afford it. You can always out value people. I yeah. think that's important. And I, I think and that's I, another I, reason why I started the podcast is just to add, hopefully add value. Yeah. And that's what you're doing is adding value to people's lives. Because to me, it, it doesn't matter. They look like I'm deaf. I'm, I'm a sales guy. You're a sales guy. You're used to, you know, getting pounded on selling. No, I could care less about my haters and people who disagree with me and tell me this. What it matters to me is when I get that email on a Sunday and I said, man, I've been struggling in my business and in my faith. And I've thought about throwing in the towel and you help me with this. That's more important than the guy who's telling me I'm doing it wrong because he's envious and I don't care. And to me, it doesn't matter. I'm deaf to that. I'm deaf right. to criticism. What all it does is fuel me to prove you wrong. I mean, you you challenge me on Facebook and on one of my podcasts and this because you're totally wrong about this. And I'll bring 10 experts on the next week and prove you totally wrong and shatter that just to shut you up. <laughs> Because that's who I am. So I said, the worst thing you can do is get a, a guy who is a loud mouth, who has a microphone, and then instigate him. It's like going into the cave and poking the lion, thinking you're going to run out of there. Yeah. You don't you don't poke the bear. So that's so to your time. <laughs> so so, so I, I yeah. Can you disagree with me on a lot of things because of where you're at? This and that and and you know yeah. We can nitpick, but at the end of the day. Like I'm getting literally at least one a day now where somebody is, man, I'm working for this company and everything you've said that I listen to, this company is doing and I'm going insane here. And they're letting everybody do whatever they want. They have no systems, no protocols. Everybody has got hired from, because the, the they manage, they're not managers, they're not leaders. They're, they, they manage through abdication. They think if they bring a person with experience, they don't, and it's what ebook talks about, e-myth. Mm -hmm. That's you, you avoided that headache and What's that crazy nightmare is all the people I've hired do not have prior experience and, and they're they the don't best either. people yeah, because, because they got the right soft skills. Yeah. yeah and they don't have per, uh, perceived uh, ways of doing things. I, yeah. My I, system. I, retraining is a bear. You know, yeah. I, I, do you guys ever have to reach out? What, what, by the way, what branch did you serve in? Uh, Air force. I did, I did security forces. Air Force. Okay. Yeah. So, an MP. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I wanted to join the Air Force back when I was 20. I was going to finish college and go into the Air Force as a computer um, IT guy and, and programmer. And I couldn't, I couldn't join the military because I had a, a previous uh, existing condition, uh, medical, and they disqualified me. Uh, so I was going to go in the Air Force. I figured it's safe. It's military. I needed discipline in my life. Uh, I was going to college and, and, and I said, when I finish my degree, I can go as an, as an E3. And man, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm making just as much money as I would in the private sector at, as, at that time. Uh, I think it was like $1,800 a month and I was 20 years old. Uh, uh -huh. going, going in as an E3, I'm like, dang, this is good money. And I'm straight out of college with just a two-year degree. I didn't even have to get my bachelor's. I just had to get that two-year right. degree. And the recruiter told me, and I said, oh, I'll, I'll go into the Air Force and do that because that'll be... I can get a really on job training and, 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 you know, coding and, and stuff. I just sucked as a coder. So that was probably good. That it didn't happen. And then I would have probably, <laughs> I would have probably been an entrepreneur and the way I am and the way I'm wired probably was not going to be the best idea to join the military. So <laughs> I, I think, you know, that, that worked out in my favor and theirs because that would have been hell. <laughs> yeah. I uh, sometimes wonder how I didn't uh, get in trouble at all in the military just because I, I, uh, I am kind of rebellious. I think, I think any entrepreneur oh. is, is, is to some extent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You have to, because you can't accept the status quo. You got to do something better than what's out there, man. Wow. What, what a conversation, what a, an enormous amount of value we're going to add to, to a lot of people's lives today. Um, any parting, anything you want to talk about that I didn't talk about? What, you know, 
Gosh, we could talk about so many, so many different stuff, but I, I think know. you just focus on improving yourself. If you focus yeah. on that, it will trickle into your business. Uh, I'm a big fan of that. Right. So just, and, and it's just small and simple steps, daily yeah. consistent, small and simple steps, working on improving yourself and it will trickle into your business. Yeah. So it's, it's 417 Pest Solutions mm -hmm. in Springfield, Missouri. Yep. And the name of your podcast is? Edify. Edify. All right. So Edify, do you have a website for that or just Edify and they can find just, it on iTunes? Yeah, just the podcast um, on Spotify, Google, uh, whatever it is. I, and I can send you the link if you want to put it in the show. Notes yeah, put it. Uh, send me all, send me all those links. I'm going to put it so we can get back links to it. And we'll put it in the okay. show notes and then uh, people can listen to you. I think they're going to get a lot of value from that, man. Hopefully so. <laughs> I think they will. You're awesome. a great guy, man. Thank you so much for being on. And you, That was you, my pleasure. Yeah, it's been it's been an amazing uh, talk. and and. All the best of luck to you out there. Thanks, you too, man. All right, man. Have a great one. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.